Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Vikraman from the University of Glasgow, and um, uh, th this is uh, a uh, overview of some things that I thought about uh, regarding uh, uh, commutativity and how it uh, it should work, or the way it is uh, being done right now in type theory. Uh, and um, th this work is based on. Uh, a student of mine who uh, who is an undergrad at Glasgow, and he started doing this project, uh, and we, we ended up proving a, a bunch of things, and um, and um, it's it's also in line with um, uh, this recent paper of uh, Sean and Fred and Clements called "A Fresh Look at Inclusivity." Uh, so that was the inspiration uh, for this talk. Um, so let me uh, start by just uh, talking about. Uh, this 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 problem with uh, lists and uh, bags and um, you know, so lists is it's like the first uh, you know purely functional data structure that you learn in doing functional programming it's cons lists which have a nil and a cons and uh, one of the most interesting things to prove is that uh, list can be appended and then when you append lists they have a left unit and a right unit. And append is associated. So, so this is what it means for lists to be free monoids. Okay. And uh, there are other ways of uh, writing free monoids, like uh, this uh, presentation using uh, a container, which uh, many of you are familiar with, which has a list, uh, which has positions and shapes. Uh, sorry, sorry, shapes and positions. Okay. Um, so, so these two uh, presentations of lists are nice, but uh, when you work with lists defined uh, inductively, you can do uh, pattern matching on them uh, and uh, you know program and prove uh, with them. But uh, what about uh, so lists are ordered, but uh, bags are unordered lists where you don't uh, uh, you don't uh, get to pick an arbitrary element of the list and when you want to implement uh, bags in type theory, the usual constructions are to take some kind of permutation relation on uh, lists and uh, you know use setoids or quotients. And um, uh, right, so um, so what? So since lists are monoids, uh, bags are or should be free commutative monoids, but. Uh, when you do things like this, it doesn't really uh, work. And uh, so, so I want to talk about uh, free monoids, how you go from free monoids to free commutative monoids, but I want to approach it in a more uh, systematic way. And um, uh, so for my type theory, I prefer to stick with the state of the art, which is homotopy type theory and uh, univalent foundations, okay? Now, I, I have uh, several reasons. Uh, if you are someone who enjoys using a proof assistant uh, to do programming and proving, then it gives you lots of tools, like uh, quotients behave properly. You have function extensionality, which computes. You have a univalence principle, which uh, lets you prove things about equivalent types and transport between them. And the thing I'm going to use is hits, which are these high inductive types, which are uh, uh, many proof systems have as a primitive now, like uh, I'm going to use cubicle algebra. Yeah, so these are the analytic reasons why if someone were programming with type theory would want to use these things. But there's also a deeper reason, which is I think of type theory as a synthetic uh, language for doing category theory. And uh, this is uh, the whole uh, types as groupoids as spaces, uh, which uh, was uh, you know Grothendieck's dream, and uh, now we have a type theory for groupoids. And uh, the well, wh what is this groupoid? Well, it's just when it, when you uh, write down any type in a proof assistant like uh, cubicle lambda, it comes with its own equality type, and it's a very well behaved equality type, which has lots of structure. Like you can iterate the type and keep going and things like this. Okay, so this is not very important, like what foundations you pick, but uh, everything I'm going to do is constructive type theory, and you could also replicate many of these things, but it would be ugly. So I just chose uh, this for uh, this reason. Okay. Uh, okay. So so before I uh, so I, I want to understand uh, commutativity a bit more abstractly, and uh, 
I should, uh, so, so this is universal algebra, which is from uh, the 30s and the 40s, but uh, I think of it a, bit, a little bit more categorically, and this is from maybe the 60s or the late 60s, just before uh, Lovier theories, okay? So this is very simple, right? Um, so it's, so you have a signature of operations or a vocabulary, which is um, a set of symbols, sigma, and uh, each symbol comes with an, uh, with a, the function which gives you its arity. Okay, so when I write monoids, they have a neutral element e, and the arity of uh, e is the zero element set, which is the empty type. Okay, and the arity of multiplication is two. Okay, and now whenever you have a signature, um, uh, you can build a signature functor. Okay, so the signature functor takes a set and uh, gives you all the inputs to the operations. Okay? So for example, if uh, if I take monoids, then sigma bar monoids on some carrier set X, it's going to, for every symbol, it's going to uh, uh, produce the type of inputs of X. So when it is zero, X to the zero is one. So the neutral operation, the neutral element is a zero, zero area operation, which has no inputs. So it's uh, one. And uh, the multiplication symbol is x to the two, which is x times x. Right? Okay, so this is this is a functor, which is nice. Um, and this, the no, okay. So when when you have functors, you can talk about functor algebras. Okay, so um, so he, here's a functor with a unary uh, symbol and a uh, binary, so a nullary symbol and a binary symbol. And uh, when I talk about algebras, these are carrier sets x with an algebra for uh, for for this uh, uh, for this sigma bar on x, and what does the algebra tell you? It tells you exactly how to run the operations. Okay, so um, so um, how to point um, so 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 this is the um, the nullary operations takes no inputs, produces an x, and that's the algebra, the component of the algebra at uh, at, the, at at e, and then the component of the algebra at uh, uh, at the binary symbol multiplication. Okay. So um, what, what this uh, does is whenever I say um, I, I want to give a structure with this, uh, I, I want to give a set with this structure of sigma, uh, all I have to give is a sigma bar algebra. Okay? And then if I want to say there's a homomorphism between two structures, I have to give a sigma bar algebra uh, homomorphism, uh, which, which is just the obvious thing to do, which is you first apply uh, the evaluation on, on x and then the function. The, the function you want to say is a homomorphism, or you uh, apply the function first on the inputs and then evaluate it. Yeah, so this is the property of being a uh, homomorphism. Okay. okay. Um, now, now that I have a sigma, uh, I... Okay. So whenever you have a category of algebras, you just forget the algebras, and then you have a forgetful functor, and now, uh, what does it mean for some, some uh, free algebra? Well, it has to be uh, a left adjoint to this uh, forgetful functor. And uh, th there is a precise way to form this, um, this free algebra for any sigma, which is, so informally, it is saying that you take all the formal sigma words on X, which means you build a set which has uh, the abstract syntax tree for every operation. So, uh, so E is, uh, you know, a special symbol, and then you can do e times x1, x1 times e, and all these trees, this infinite set is going to be f of x. That, that's your set of free algebras. Okay? Uh, it's, it's often useful to uh, draw these as trees because um, when, you, when you have uh, uh, b binary, uh, you know, binary trees. So I, these are binary trees, but I draw them in the, uh, you know, it's uh, it's bottom up, not top down. The root is at the bottom because uh, you plug in the inputs at the top, and then you get the output at the bottom. Okay. So it's all, all the trees which have which have the inputs drawn from elements of X. Okay. Trees that actually look like trees. Yes, <laughs> the way they should. Be. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, Okay, so 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 that that was a construction, but you know there are different ways of drawing things. But uh, 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 what what do you prove about them, right? So the thing to prove when something is free is to prove a universal property, and uh, 
the universal property says that, um, uh, so I, I'll say that f of x is free on x whenever I can exhibit this structure and this property, okay? So um, the, the structure I need is some way to, you know, put things in x into uh, uh, f of x. That's uh, like I push the generators into uh, the free algebra. And, um, and the other thing is exactly a, uh, a, so it, it has to be a structure, right? So it has to be a sigma structure. So I say sigma fx to x is the, the algebra um, uh, thing. Okay, so so the universal property says that whenever I, so I, I have a, so, so given this data, I have a canonical uh, uh, structure on f, which is this fx and this algebra, which tells you how to evaluate it. And uh, given any other structure y, uh, so I'm using this model theoretic tradition where I draw the structure in fracture and the carrier set is you know, just Roman. Okay, so uh, so given any such y, uh, uh, there is a way to take a function from x to y, and then you compose with the generators map, and then you get a, uh, uh, so, so it's the other way, sorry. So given any, so, so the universal property says that given any homomorphism out of, fx to y, I can compose it with the generators map uh, with, uh, and I get a function from x to y, so just the thing on the carrier. Okay? And uh, for this to be universal, there should be as much data in this as is in x to y. So, okay, so every function x to y should canonically lift to uh, an f sharp, such that f sharp composed with the generators will give you the same function back, okay? So, so the primitive operation here, I mean, so if you have seen, uh, you know, uh, functional programming uh, folds and recursion schemes and uh, catamorphisms, this is what uh, you say. I mean, it's an adjunction hidden inside, but uh, uh, that's what it is. Okay, so, so to say that uh, something is free is to prove an equivalence like this, a canonical equivalence uh, like this, okay. Um, so so this, this sharp operation is my primitive or the fold uh, on the, uh, data structure and uh, let let me show you how you can just uh, define this in type theory. Okay, so so given some sigma, you can define this type of uh, trees on sigma, where the leaves are taking data from x and the nodes are algebras on fx. Okay, if you write this definition in type theory, you'll get the free sigma algebra on x, and this is exactly the operation here. Um, uh, this is very uh, simple. Okay. Now, the, the problem comes when you impose uh, equations on these uh, signatures. So, uh, uh, so, so classical universal algebra you know, stops at uh, you know, signatures uh, of operations and then they have to satisfy an equational theory. So I'm, I'm going to be a bit more careful in defining my framework where I try to, I, I'm going to name the symbols. And uh, so I have an equational signature which has a set of symbols which is this epsilon, and I want to track three variables. So whenever I write equations, uh, so, right, so whenever I write equations, they're usually things like this, right? So they have some notion of three variables. So X is free in the equation. And uh, I, I'm going to, so this is, this is what a signature is for an equation. Okay? And, uh, and then I say that I have a system of equations if I can give you two different trees. So the left-hand side tree and the right-hand side tree. Okay. so. The, these trees you can, uh, so these trees is the F sigma on the free variables uh, taken as generators. So um, what's this? so so when you have monoids, you have uh, three equations, unit left, unit right, so on. And, um, and this, uh, the free variable function, which uh, uh, assigns to each equation name, a, a type which tracks its uh, free variables, okay? And uh, right, so so you can think of these as uh, de Brown indices if you use finite sets with finitary uh, uh, finite number of uh, of um, uh, free variables bound in each equation. Then let's say the unit law looks like this, where this is the variable in context at position zero, and then zero, one, two, as so it just uh, rotates the tree like this. Okay. Um, okay. So. Uh, algebras which satisfy these equations are, are called uh, varieties. Now, this, this term is a bit outdated because algebraic varieties came in, and so no one uses this anymore, but let's just uh, keep, uh, so it's due to Barkov from the HSP theorem and all this. Okay, so um, now, now, now I'm going to define what is a variety on some, given a, uh, a signature for operations and a signature for equations. 
So to give a variety is to give a sigma algebra structure, right? And that's a sigma structure, which is just an algebra. And uh, given a system of equations, uh, so E bar is the type and E is a system of equations on E bar. And then I say that X satisfies E if uh, for every equation and for every assignment of three variables to values in X, uh, this rho sharp, so, so rho is a function from uh, uh, so three variables uh, E to X, and then I can lift it uniquely to uh, trees of three variables to X, okay? because X is a uh, sigma structure, okay? And then uh, this, this equation just says that uh, you take uh, rho bar and it uh, co-equalizes two maps like A to, so this is very nice. I mean, it fits uh, uh, this thing. Okay, so to say something is a monoid is to give a uh, a sigma for monoids, a, a sigma algebra on this signature and uh, to give a, and to prove that it satisfies these equations. So this is the satisfaction relation. Okay, okay so, so we could construct uh, free algebras by just writing down inductive types. But uh, to construct uh, free varieties on these things, so now I don't. Not, it's not just a sigma; it's a sigma and an e. And uh, so the classical constructions of these things are to take quotients. Okay. So um, the way it goes is uh, you construct this uh, congruence relation by uh, you know taking the, uh, take the congruence closure of of the uh, of the equations that uh, you had, and then. Uh, uh, and then the free algebra is going to have uh, uh, so uh, so this is the variety the free variety on X and the universal map will be like you go from X to the trees and then you quotient the trees by the relation so, so two steps and this is what and I mean this is this is uh, a um, it's in, it's important like to understand what is the constructive uh, content of, of these uh, constructions because you cannot construct for arbitrary infinitary uh, equational theories in um, these uh, free algebras in constructive type theory because there's a no-go uh, taboo that happens it's due to Andreas Blas. But uh, for finitary things, you can always do it and uh, you can replicate this construction in type theory okay, for finitary things. Okay, so I'm, I'm so, so this is, so this was the abstract framework for saying what uh, commutativity means. And uh, so the punchline for all of this is to state uh, uh, this, uh, this, this theorem, which I want to say because, so, so, so when we quotient lists by uh, commutation relations, uh, what we are saying is that uh, there, there is some kind of binary relation. So I'm writing sigma uh, plus, uh, uh, so yeah, so, uh, so sigma and, and this, uh, binary operation, so two array operation, right? And uh, so you have to give me some relation on this. And uh, then this quotient will be the free commutative sigma epsilon variety on X, if and only if, so you can now characterize uh, exactly what this relation has to satisfy, okay? So, um, so the first thing is, okay, so if you put two things in the relation, they have to commute. Right, so for every word here, and I don't impose commutativity now, and uh, you put them there, and uh, it has to commute. And uh, and the second thing is this: this commutativity has to be free, or has to respect the freeness in some way. Okay, so uh, so uh, so this this is the second requirement, which says that for any other commutative structure that you give me, and if I have a function on the carrier sets, then for every a and b, I uh, if I uh, if I know that, uh, ah, okay, I'm missing. So if I know that A is uh, in the relation with B, then uh, uh, then uh, this F sharp applied on A should be equal to F sharp applied on B. So F sharp co-equalizes these two uh, pairs, okay? Um, and okay, so I mean, uh, this is uh, this is a type theoretic version of, uh, you know, a, a small, uh, version of uh, operads. So in operads, you have to distinguish between uh, non-symmetric and symmetric ones. And uh, generally, operads have uh, n-ary operations, and then the uh, permutations act freely on them. So so all of this can be done for n as well, but I want to do just for two. Okay, um, uh, okay. So, so now that I have this framework, I want to go to monoids, okay? So, so monoids are uh, algebras for the associative operator, which I write ASS, and 
it has the operations for monoids and the equations for monoids. And if I construct the non-symmetric version, then I get uh, free monoids. And I construct the symmetric version, I get uh, uh, monoids. OK. So uh, the naive thing to do, I have hot and I have hits. OK. So I know exactly what data goes inside a community monoid. And uh, so hits have, uh, you know, so, so, you, so normally in inductive type, you would write uh, the point constructor. So eta, e, so th that was the tree. Okay, but in a hit, you can add more things. Uh, so these are path constructors whose targets will be paths or higher paths in the type. And uh, I just impose these equations, like, like so, so, so I'm not just generating uh, the points. I'm also generating the relations on the points, okay, uh, recursively. So it's a recursive hit. And uh, so you have point constructors, path constructors, and then you truncate because you don't want anything uh, above. Uh, uh, level one. So this kills all the higher parts. You just say it has a uh, uniqueness of identity proofs at the higher level. Okay. So, so this is free monoid, and you can show that this is the free monoid on A because it's almost true by definition. But then you have lists, and uh, lists are this thing with nil and cons. Okay. And then you can also show that lists are the free monoid on A, uh, on list of X is the free monoid on X. Okay. And then here's the container version, which is uh, with N and uh, indexing functions from thin n to x. And OK, so this, this is a much more tricky proof because you don't have pattern matching. And uh, it requires some more work. But then you can also show that it's the free monoid on x. And uh, so, so here is, uh, so, so the fact is, like, we, we, we didn't have to impose any equations on lists. And uh, th that's because there, there is a very nice situation which happens uh, which is that I, I have some polynomial functor on set, and its functor algebras are equivalent to the free monoid monad algebras. Okay, and so the reason lists are free monoids is uh, because uh, uh, the free monoid functor is algebraically free, and th this fact was noted by people in the 70s and 80s, but uh, seems to have not been uh, properly uh, remembered. Uh, okay, so uh, so now so now that I have this, I want to ask uh, what, what is it about lists that's, that's good, OK? So uh, informally, uh, when you want to work with lists, you don't have to worry about higher paths. You just have to worry about points, OK? So, so lists come with a good definitional equality, OK? And uh, you know, like when you write proofs with lists, you know, they're simple. Like it's, it's, that's OK. So I mean, I was being very vague because I don't know how to make this more formal. And uh, I, I don't. Uh, uh, so, so the reason this is this is a very informal notion. I cannot uh, express this inside type theory because uh, inside uh, type theory, two things which are equivalent will always satisfy the same property. So, any property which I can write down in type theory has to be uh, invariant under equivalence. So, so what is it about lists that's good? Okay, so let me try to be. Let let me let me try some things. Okay, so uh, so this is the. Uh, uh, so uh, what is normalization for monoids that uh, it's from the 90s and uh, they uh, were working with setoids and uh, uh -huh. so uh, what uh, what it means for monoids to be normal free mon lists to be a normal form for uh, free monoids is that I can find a normal form function which uh, goes from free monoids to lists and uh, you know it uh, preserves the equality on uh, Elements in the free monoid. Okay. Uh, but now that I'm in hot, I don't want to use uh, equivalence relations and things. I'm just, or, or setoids. I'm just writing equality everywhere. Okay. And, uh, and maybe the more interesting thing is that uh, you have a cons operation, which allows you to insert uh, elements uh, of, the, of, the, of the underlying set into the list, right? So cons operation is uh, producing a function from list to list for, for every x. And uh, cons is injective, OK? So it means, uh, so I so lists are the normal forms. I insert uh, the same thing, x, to two different lists, x's and y's. And if I know that after inserting them, they become equal, then without the x's, they should also be equal. So cons being injective is an important property. And uh, this is what I'm using to sort of uh, uh, claim, OK, this is a formal notion of what it means for something to be a normal form for free structures. Okay, uh, so so let's see if you have a universal property of uh, 
of lists being free monoids, then you have a type free monoid X. You can go from X to list of X by just the generator, and then you extend it, and you get normal forms for free. Like this is the NF function. Okay, uh, it's a congruence by construction, and uh, and okay. The interesting thing is, how do you prove cons is injective? Well, if you have Agda's pattern matching, it's very powerful. But let's say you wanted to write it down by hand, and uh, the way to do it is to understand what is uh, observational equality on on these types. And uh, lists have a pointwise. Uh, uh, observational equality. Okay. Uh, okay. I should. Uh, uh, okay. So uh, you can do the same thing now. So now, now you have a presentation of three monoids and you add the permutation relation. Okay. And uh, uh, so, okay. I, I will skip all this because uh, I wanted to show that there are many ways to construct uh, free commutative monoids. And uh, I have been doing them with uh, Wind, who is a student at Glasgow. And you can check out the repository here. Uh, maybe I'll just show a little bit of this S-list type, which is lists where you are allowed to swap two elements uh, at, uh, on the head of the list. Okay, so so let's say you have one, two, three, and then you swap the first two, you get two, one, three, then you swap the last. So you can swap anywhere in the list by congruence. Okay, so uh, as it turns out, this, this is also free, and because it's free with the extensional bag version, it generates all the permutations. Okay. Um, so now th there's something interesting which happens with, you can program with lists or you can program with uh, these swapped lists. And uh, both of them have a length function, which is a homomorphism from lists to natural numbers. Uh, then you can say, okay, I know my list is non-empty, which means it has a length, which is successor of something. And uh, you can write a head function on lists, on, on non-empty lists, but you cannot write a head function on swapped lists, okay? And, uh, uh, so, uh, so, so this this is the main thing. Which uh, so, if you want to do observational equality on these uh, swapped lists, there, there are uh, you, you are given uh, you know uh, two uh, cons lists x uh, x s and y y s, and then there are two ways for them to be equal. One is the pointwise thing from lists, which is like you put the x on the head and uh, y on the head of the other. Or you can uh, do this uh, braiding thing, which says, uh, okay, so if I can find the ZS such that this uh, XS becomes equal to YZS and it takes a Y, which is from the other side, and there's another YS, which takes X from this side. And uh, if you can do that, then uh, you can also say two lists are equal because there's a hidden uh, you know, uh, swapping happening somewhere inside. Okay. And if you do this, you can define a observational equality on S lists. And uh, this is what I was going to say. And uh, this is this is really uh, powerful. And you can prove uh, lots of things about uh, free community monoids. Uh, and I think, uh, OK, so and the final thing I wanted to say is this uh, way of uh, doing uh, lists to unordered lists. Right? You can go by taking the inclusion of the quotient. And, uh, if it were possible to go back from unordered lists to ordered list, you'd have to fix an ordering on, on, on the elements. And uh, so, so here's a theorem which shows exactly what uh, goes on. So if you do this uh, thing, uh, and if you can construct a section for this uh, quotient inclusion, which is a monoid homomorphism, then a then I can construct a linear order on A. So if you had uh, this thing, then every type would be linearly ordered. and uh, this this is what uh, I wanted to improve on this this paper of Sean's. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, okay. Um, so okay. So I, I'll just uh, summarize what I think. Uh, uh, so co commutativity is uh, there is something inherently higher dimensional about it, and I think hits are the uh, way to do it. And you know I've done it with many different hits, and I, I think this is the way to go. And uh, and uh, we we have this whole uh, library of uh, Building uh, free commutative monoids, and uh, you can. I got interested in them because of denotational semantics. But uh, uh, after doing everything, like there's a lot of things you can do, like you know the linear logic stuff. Like you represent contexts as uh, free commutative monoids, uh, not uh, you know Cartesian ones with uh, weakening. So that could be an application, and uh, lots of constructive combinatorics where you prove things about the algorithms fit into this uh, framework of. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll stop here because I'm out of time. Thank you, Vikram. <laughs>
we have time for maybe one question if there's one very pressing one. Otherwise, we'll relay them to the coffee break. Okay, questions? Oh, I'm coming. Um, <clears throat> I waited to the end, but I wanted to ask the question on the first slide. You, you said that there's something wrong with permutation on lists. It doesn't work or it's bad. Nothing I've seen in your talk suggests to me either that there's anything bad permutation or that we some from your analysis of when X cons X is as a permutation of Y cons Y's. Can you say more about why permutations are bad? I don't understand. Um, okay, so first... Um, also, Anton, can you set up? Thank you. Yes, uh, the, the, the view of uh, taking setoids and quotienting them is... Uh, I, I mean, I would challenge you to prove the theorems that I've proved, but using uh, you know, this definition of quotients. And I mean, we've tried doing it and it's, it's insane. Like, uh, so because you've generated too much and then you're quotienting down, you have to keep working with uh, uh, you know, extensional functions, which are permutations and uh, uh, Agda runs out of memory and these proofs become very complex. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that instead of doing all that, uh, we should try to write down the fold for uh, free commutative monoids. And once you do that, all these proofs, uh, you can just work with the universal property. And uh, uh, so, so th there are things that this can do, which other things I, uh, other techniques cannot do is what I think is, but, but this is an engineering problem, not a uh, mathematical problem. Uh, and uh, well, yeah. And I mean, and the other thing is of course, uh, Hit, I, I'm using hits, but pattern matching on hits is really bad. And uh, th that's the reason I want to work with the universal property, like the categorical universal, universal property of the type theory. theory. Yeah, because the type theory one is very rich, and uh, there's a lot of combinatorial insights to make it a uh, stronger one. And once you have that, uh, lots of things become easy. Uh, 